uh, how does a community go through a process, deal with a, a set of historical problems like the ones we're facing? Georgetown's relationship to slavery was not simple. It was complicated. The core of this connection between Georgetown and slavery is not hard to decipher. The Maryland Jesuits expanded Georgetown and needed cash to pay the cost. So, so the sale was extremely controversial. There were Jesuits who, who supported emancipation. There were Jesuits, many Jesuits, who believed that they had a pastoral duty to continue to hold these slaves. In other words, a sense, a sense of attachment, but ultimately ownership over the slaves that was not transferable to another group of people. Brown's relationship to slavery was always clear. The Brown family, with the exception of Quaker convert Moses Brown, were merchants and, more importantly, slave traders. 109 of the 196 slaves exported on the Sally died in the process. Fast forward to 2003. Newly appointed Brown University President Ruth Simmons assembled the Steering Committee on Slavery and Justice, which comprised faculty, students, and administrators. Committee. President Simmons' position as an African-American woman, a previously published advertisement in the student newspaper denouncing reparations, and the novelty of such an endeavor made this a challenge from the very beginning. The report is an 88-page document that's available online, but I think the more powerful document is actually the university's response to the recommendation. But the response really shows how far an institution is actually willing to go. That memory is cross-generational, and we discovered how people in our generation, especially young people in our generation, were traumatized by the realization that their forebears had been slaves. We discovered that memory and the sharing of memory became a first step in a dialogue between victims and perpetrators. Realized that the TRC was no cure-all. It wasn't going to solve everything. It wasn't a fairy godmother's wand. It wasn't the beginning of the kingdom of God. But it broke the silence. I would hope that in investigating slavery, you will take the Black Lives Matter process very, very seriously. We, we have to come up with ways to start to change the culture in more powerful ways on grounds. And, and students, alumni, everybody needs to be involved. Yes, because uh, in the African American community, the university is uh, often referred to as the big plantation. And this is this, again, 200 year history of, at best, right, complete neglect of the surrounding community, and at worst, at worst, something far uh, more malignant what we're doing. And we've really tried to define it as a repair process. It's about this conversation. And the, the first step is simply inviting people to the table and listening. The word reparations became the kind of buzzword to attack what was happening. And so as a community, it wasn't just about a committee kind of working behind the scenes. I think it was a lot of what we're doing now, offering um, each other a different educational experience that we might not have otherwise. Symbolically, symbolism is a very, very powerful thing. To name one of those walls, dare I say it, after an African American, if it were a slave, a rebellious slave, Maybe the better, but now I'm provoking, so I'll keep quiet. Uh, Freedom Hall being named in a way that um, specifically remembers the sales of the 1830s. Part of it is a, a deep commitment to unerasing the names of the erased and a commitment to um, using this as an opportunity not to erase this chapter in our history, but to remember it better. So it was ultimately transformation is perhaps the best form of reparation that one can have to create a Georgetown of tomorrow that will ensure that the things of the past never happen again in one form or another.